Hello everybody and welcome back. Hope we're having a great day and we're all doing well. Here are five hidden new changes on Operation New Blood's test server, which I didn't cover in my original New Blood video and is very good to know going into the new season. I don't want to take up a lot of your time, so if you enjoy this video, drop it a like. Consider dropping a comment since it does help with the algorithm and let's get into this video. So to begin with is a change to Deimos, which a lot of people have wanted ever since he was first revealed. And that is the fact that you can now put grips on his AK. Yes, this is something which the AK never had. Of course, this is a weapon which originated alongside the attacking operator Nomad. And I do regret to inform a lot of you, no, these grips have not been added to Nomad. They have only been added to Deimos's version of the AK. Nomad is still going to go into Operation New Blood with a gripless AK. But the reason for doing this is just to help increase the firepower of Deimos because Ubisoft have seen that he has had a relatively low pick and win rate, but they believe it's more in the weapon category, less than his gadget. And I have to agree with that. I think his gadget is actually very balanced. However, I won't deny I have kind of been put off playing him simply because I'm not a fan of the AK. It's an all right weapon, but with the addition of grips, I'm definitely going to play him more. And all three of the grips are now available. You have the vertical grip which will reduce the recoil of the weapon itself. As well as this, you have the angled grip, which will allow you to reload the weapon faster. And finally, you have the horizontal grip, which will allow you to move faster. If you've not played for a little bit, these grips did get a rework in Operation Deadly Omen. That's why a few of them do some different stuff. For example, angled grip no longer gives you faster ADS speed. It gives you faster reload. Just a really nice addition to Deimos, and hopefully Ubisoft take note of this and finally give the F2 its grips back because that gun has just been completely overshadowed by the 417. Next up, we're going to take a look at Repelling. Now, you may be aware that Repelling did get a rework in Operation Deadly Omen as well. Personally, that was one of my favorite quality of life changes this game has ever gotten. Repelling now just feels so much smoother, more natural, and it's genuinely improved the attacking side of the game so much. There's so many more things you can now repel on due to them now being viable because of how better this mechanic now feels such as skylights or these other risky locations where before it would have taken forever to get on and off repel and you would have just been a free kill. Well, in the new season, Operation New Blood, Ubisoft have continued to improve on these changes to the repelling system and you can now sprint into a repel. Now, if you're an experienced player, you were kind of able to go from a sprint to repel anyway, but it's just removing that little extra step and making it far easier for you to go straight into that repel. Again, another improvement on a once clunky mechanic and this is just allowing so many more different plays to be used and this is absolutely great that's not the only thing they've done to repelling however you can now pick up drones whilst you're on the repel this is something which i never even thought of i didn't even know that you couldn't do this i probably did subconsciously but when someone would ask me i probably wouldn't know the answer but it's great that you can now do this because you know it makes sense that these operators can pick up their drones whilst they're on repel of course this isn't going to completely change the game for attack but it's it's just another really nice thing to have in their arsenal. If your drone is on a window ledge and you want to pick it up, you can now do that instead of having to then jump it off maybe and drive it to the floor and then get off repel yourself and then pick up that drone and then get back on repel. It removes all of these unnecessary processes and just allows you, like I was saying, to just make more of these plays without sort of being hindered by the mechanics. I do wonder if they're going to continue working on the repelling mechanics as seasons go on, but these overall changes to repel has got to be one of my favorite changes to the game and i'm sure a lot of you would agree with that as well i'm interested to see what they potentially may do in the future right this one is for shields and it does seem like they have had a little nerf this season it's honestly nothing too crazy but it was definitely noticeable when i was playing them and i think pigeon was also on a shield and he also noticed it instantly as well but the ads times for shields have been decreased now i don't have any specific times for this i don't think they have been published but there is definitely an ads speed nerf for shields and if we're going to put all the jokes aside about me being a, a monty main and everything i think this is valid the ads speed is definitely extremely fast for shields shields were reworked to make them more tactical i can you know put aside my pride as someone who plays monty all the time and say that shields are quite aggressive and extremely frag heavy so slowing down the ads speed is definitely valid now looking at it in comparison it doesn't really look that much different but i can assure you when you're playing you do feel 
feel it going a lot slower. So these are one of those things where you just have to trust me on it. So this is definitely going to make shields, I guess, easier to kill because your head is still going to be exposed, but your gun is going to take longer to actually be usable. So that means if you are going aggressive, you are going for that ADS, the defender you're playing against is going to have more of an opportunity to headshot you before you take them out. As well as this, it seems like they've updated the animation from when you're throwing a gadget behind your shield because in the current build, it kind of just flies out of your shield. It doesn't really look like you're throwing it. But in Operation New Blood, it does seem like the shield does move out of the way to compensate for the fact that you're now throwing something beside it. Similar to the changes to repelling, I feel like this is just something they're going to continuously fine tune and just make better over time, whether that comes to small tweaks or quite big nerfs. I will say though, out of my honest opinion, I wouldn't be surprised if some more shield changes do come in Season 3 or potentially in the mid-season patch for Operation New Blood because they were banned like crazy at the Manchester Major. I think I've done a good way of showcasing how strong shield specifically Monty can be, so I wouldn't be surprised if some nerfs are potentially on the horizon. Right, so in Operation New Blood, there is quite a few changes, very small to a lot of maps. Coconut Bra done a good job of showcasing these. I'm going to kind of admit a lot of them because they're more for these parkour enthusiasts and it's something that us average players don't even bother about. And by that, I mean they've like turned a microphone 180 to the opposite direction so you can't like parkour onto the roof. It's stuff like that. Nothing that really concerns us. However, if you head to Dragon on Skyscraper, there is a decently big change here, which does change how you hold this room. Now, in the current version of the game on Operation Deadly Omen, and ever since this rework came out, a very popular way to hold Dragon would be using the angles inside and around the Dragon itself, mostly with an ACOG, to really get these pixel angles on anyone pushing around by Shrine. This made pushing Dragon quite hard, and on top of the fact that Skyscraper is an extremely defender-sided map, one of the most defender-sided in the pool, Yubi have decided to tackle the Dragon a little bit and have raised this platform around it to cover up a lot of these pixel angles. Now, you can still work around the Dragon, there is still some angles you can get, but not to the extent you could get before. This means if you are playing in the Dragon position, you are going to have to expose your body a lot more if you want to get anyone who's trying to swing the corner. Now, I won't deny I think this is a pretty valid change. Like I was saying, Skyscraper is already defender-sided enough. Having a room where not only the window, but the main corner as well is covered by these multiple pixel angles through a Dragon statue can be very hard and frustrating to push. So I think toning it down a little bit is fair enough, and if you want my two cents, I actually think that they should put a roof hatch in the Dragon Room, since there is pretty much a wasted bit of roof above this, like the only bit of the roof on Skyscraper you can actually walk on, and there's nothing really up there other than a drone vent. But yeah, a little change to Skyscraper to make it easier when you're pushing Dragon, but definitely not an unwelcome change. Right, so this last edition here is something which I glazed over in my Operation New Blood video, but didn't really cover because the feature itself would cause my version of the test server to crash. So I really couldn't get anything for it. But that is basically the new standard playlist map filler. Now, this is personally a really good change. And basically what this is, is that it gives you the option to choose which map pool you'll queue for in standard. So let's say you're more of a ranked player and you want to play only ranked maps in standard. Well, you can turn on the ranked map pool option and you'll only get the maps which are also available in ranked. Or on the other hand, let's say that you don't want to play any of those ranked maps. You only want to play the maps which are in casual, but in a standard aspect, meaning that you can play plane or fortress or yacht or these other casual only maps in a more structured team environment in standard. Well, then you can turn on the non-ranked map pool option. And finally, the option I'm probably going to choose is the option of all maps. This means when you queue for a standard game, you can get the entire map pool of ranked and the entire map pool of casual as an option. They'll all have the same odds of being picked, and that means you can play every single map in the game under the standard rule set, which is the same amount of rounds as ranked minus the extended overtime. There is only one round of overtime in standard. Now, I think this is an incredible change. Standard used to be a mode called unranked and unranked was literally just a clone of rank minus the elo part. 
They then replaced Unranked with a mode called Standard, and it had a mix of some ranked maps and some casual maps. And this sort of upset a lot of people because some people didn't want to play those casual maps. They only wanted to play ranked maps, but they didn't want to play ranked. So then they changed Standard again to only have the ranked map pool. But now with this change, I think this is like the magnum opus of this mode, because now you can just pick which version of this Standard you want it to be. If you want it to be a clone of ranked minus the elo, it can be that. If you're like myself, and want to play these quick match only maps in a more structured format, you can do that. And I'm really excited for that. I've never had the opportunity to play maps like House in a structured team format. Because if you're going in quick match with a five stack and try hard in, it's not a very fun thing to do. You're kind of just casual stomping at that point and it's not really cool. But if it's going to be in standard, I can play with four of my friends, put in a little bit of effort, of course not the same amount as ranked, but still have enough to have a structured match in a map I've never been able to do it in before. I am really excited for this change. And you know what? I know I said I was doing five in this video, but here's a bonus one. They have also changed some of the pricing of operators for those of you who do not have everyone. So to begin with, Thunderbird is now going to be 10,000 renown or 240 R6 credits. Sense is going to be 15,000 renown or 360 R6 credits. And Fenrir is going to be 20,000 renown or 480 R6 credits. And so everyone, those are some hidden changes coming to Rainbow Six Siege in Operation New Blood. Be sure to drop a comment let me know which one of these is your favourite. Drop a like on this video if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you are new. I'll catch you later. I love you all. Stay safe. Peace.